We looked at how to rename a clip after we defined it, but we haven't looked at how to rename a track yet. So let's go ahead and do that. This is our first time naming a track. As you can see, Pro Tools does its best to give you the track name. It takes out the vowels and tries to give you as many consonants as it can give you of the pieces in your clip name. So if I double click on here, I can call this clock edit and give myself a kind of a better representation of what's going on in this than consonants Pro Tools decides to show me. Track names are important because let's pop over to the mix window for a second. So we can do that a couple ways. If we go to window, we can flip over to mix, but see there's this really handy command here, command equals or control equals on a PC. And just like I think I can convince you that the smart tool is smart, I think that this key command is also a very smart way to switch between the edit window and I'm going to hit command equals and the mix window. And when you get to the mix window, you won't be able to see the waveforms. You'll see lots and lots of track faders here. And having your track correctly named or informatively named is the way to go because you'll want to rearrange its volume here based on what is going on in the track. And if you have vocal or some non informative title on your track name, it won't help you as much. So, closing the mix window for now, just trying to convince you to be good with your track names. So let's do something crazy. Let's take all of these tracks and command A to select them all, control A on a PC and hit the delete key. Okay. Boom. Wow. You mean all that editing that I did and all those definings and everything all gone? No, it's non-destructive editing. Remember? So over here on the right, is this little arrow fellow. Let's click him and bring back our clip bin. And so we see some things in here. Let's push this wall out to the left here, this little vertical line, so that we can see what's inside the clip bin. And there are all the pieces we have already defined and named in an earlier movie. So there's one that's in bold type here, and the rest of these are not in bold type. And that's because the grandfather clock, this big one, if I bring him over to the timeline, we can see that that's the big, big clip that contains all these other little pieces. So it's in bold because it's a parent file, and these other pieces are children of that parent. They're the things that we chopped up and defined and named. So I'm going to delete that from the timeline. And I want to explain the difference between slip and shuffle. And I think this little exercise is a good one to do that. So remember that our sound effect showed up with its kind of chain wind up. That was the first little piece in it. So we want that to be first. Well, in slip mode, I can pick this clip up from the clip bin and drag it over here. And wherever I drop it, it's going to land. So I could push it all the way over to the left wall here which I'll do. I'll just go ahead and do that. Push it over to the left wall. And the next little piece was the carillon piece. So I can pick this up. Now this gets a little harder because when I drag it over here and try and match up the very end of this with the very beginning of carillon, there's no magnets here. There's no hard wall. I'm just going to drop it here because I'm a little scared. I might not get this perfect. I could zoom in, you know, zoom way in. So this is all way too hard, right? To try and get these lines to match up perfectly. I mean, you can do it, but who has the time? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to shuffle mode. And now, like boxcars on a train, if I drag this Carillon over here, and I say, go to the timeline. Look where it goes. There's a yellow line over there. It's already going to bam right up next to the boxcar in front of it. So it's perfectly latched onto exactly where I want it to be now. 
And the chimes were the next thing. So picking that up and in shuffle mode, boom, it just drops on exactly where I want it to. And this ring out, boom, drops on exactly where I want it. And now I've recreated the four pieces of the grandfather clock that we chopped up in the last movie. So slip mode is freedom. It gives you the freedom to place that clip anywhere on the timeline that you want. It's also inaccuracy maybe a little bit because it may put it where you don't exactly want it. So shuffle mode, boom, will slide up right up next to the thing in front of it. So very handy for that. Now let's look at how we use the modes and the tools together. So our goal now is to chop up some of these chimes. So let's say we want it to be four o'clock instead of 12 o'clock. So we want three chimes and then this long ring out. So in slip mode, I could, I'm showing you the wrong way to do this first, to show you the value of the right way to do it. I could slide this over and, well, I think it's right there. Okay, now that's a good spot. And then I, whoops, I got a little too much of it. And then I got to kind of, yeah, okay. And then bring this over. Okay. So not the best way to do this. Let me undo and undo and undo. And now I'm back to where I was. And so this part you can do with me if you click shuffle mode or F1 will switch you to shuffle mode. Now it's a one step process where you're going to trim this back end, but watch what happens to the ring out when I let go of this. Boom. So pretty handy. Now, I'm not sure I got it exactly right. Let me zoom in and see. Well, yeah, I got a kind of a double hit here on the chime. So let me trim off just a bit more of that and maybe just even a bit more of that. And now I think I'm okay. And now I have three chimes plus the long one at the end instead of the bunch of chimes that I had earlier. So pretty easy to work with. If you're used to working in Final Cut or Avid Media Composer, think of this as a ripple edit. Pro Tools hasn't called it that yet, but you kind of wonder that as they move and try and merge Pro Tools into the Avid family, if that isn't maybe the next step down the line. So what you want is for the edit to ripple on down the timeline. And so in film editing or video editing, we call it that. And here we call it a shuffle edit so that the last piece comes over and fills up the gap.